Mesa. <laughs> hey, Mr. Warrior. Welcome to another mouth video. <laughs> oh, sorry. So I've been a very scary voice. It's hard to commit. I gotta commit when I do these voice impersonations. Hey, it's review. What are we? Oh, what are we doing? Mr. Wara, read the script. Oh, you mean there's a script to this video? Oh, no. Actually, there's no script. This is all improvised, my friends. Well, we are doing chapter 8. We are doing the third video of the review for this chapter. So let's get going, eh? Come on, Mr. Wara. We're waiting. Okay. Jesse is making a pitcher of fruit smoothies. It contains three cups of orange juice. His measuring cup only holds one quarter cup. <laughs> How sad. Very, very sad. How many times will Jesse need to fill the measuring cup to get the three cups of orange juice? I would say a very long time. He could be waiting for, well, next Christmas by the time he gets that done. Well, how can we solve that? I'm looking at this in a quarter cup. Ooh, I, yes, I do. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Nice line. Yeah, let's draw. No, okay. So if we have three cups of orange juice, so let me put it this way. Then one cup, right? One cup is going to be equal to four one quarter cups. All right? So if one cup is equal to four one quarter cups, then I should be able to take the four quarter cups I would need and multiply that by three. So four times three cups then will equal 12. In this case, 12 one quarter cups or he says 12 times, I believe would be the lucky answer to this problem. He would have to do it 12 times. Okay. Hello, Square. You like doing that? Goodbye, Square. All right. Now it says K Kayla. Is that how you pronounce that? I think so. Kayla has one quarter cup of oil. Yahoo! Yeah. She pours the same amount into each of two oil lamps. Uh hello, you know there's something called electricity. Oh wait, this may be Okay, we're talking about another time. Which equation represents the fraction of a cup of oil that is in each oil lamp? Mark all the apply. Okay, now that I can do. Let's take a look. Letter A says one half divi divided by one quarter equals N. Okay, half a cup possibly? No, a half divided by a quarter. How are we figuring that out? That doesn't make any sense. Our dividend is a quarter cup and we're going to be dividing that by two because of two oil lamps all right so a half divided by a quarter wouldn't make sense so no a uh -uh. no thank you now b says one quarter times one half equals n interesting they move multiplication however this is kind of tricky and this is kind of a hard thing to get conceptually it even sometimes drives me a little bit crazy, if you know what I mean. And that is, is that one quarter divided by two is the same as one quarter multiplied by one half. See, there's his buddy down here. One quarter divided by two. I just saw him. E, I'm circling you in now. You are the chosen one. Yes, you are, because you are one quarter divided by two. But that also means that one quarter divided by one half, I'm saying one quarter multiplied by one half is also true. So I have two. What about the rest of them? Two divided by a quarter? No, oh, I can see they're switching around. It's that two oil lamps divided by a quarter cup of oil. That's not what the problem says. And one, <laughs> this is a comical one, four divided by two. Yeah, that's the little one they try to trick you on, I guess. And two times one quarter, no, it's not two lamps. We're not multiplying. This problem really is division. Okay, let's move on. Brandon made a loaf of bread. He gave equal portions of one half. Mm, equal portions. You should be noticing this. <clears throat> Why am I talking like this? I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> he gave equal portions of one half of the loaf of bread to six friends. Which diagram could Brendan? Ooh, look at they misspelled his name. 
Ooh, which way is it? With an O or an A, make up your mind. Okay, which diagram could Brendan use to find the fraction of the loaf of bread that each friend received? Mark all that apply. There we say, mark all that apply. Okay, we can do that. A, it looks like, I don't know, is this a hole? It could be. This could be like one loaf of bread. So I would take any diagram thinking it is one hole. And then the dotted lines kind of give you an indication. Ooh, here's your halfway mark. Okay, that makes sense because he's not actually sharing a whole loaf. He's sharing a half. And there's a solid line there. And then we have one, two, three that are shaded. Well, he's sharing it with six friends. So that wouldn't make sense. Sorry, you're out of the running. You are not the chosen one. Sorry. Okay, and then we come down here, and then we got another solid line. Here's your one loaf of bread. Now we have, okay, it looks like there's one here. And then we have two, three, four, five, six. There's six definitely in there. I like that. Now, it's not you had to shade all six, because which diagram could Brennan use to find the fraction of the loaf that he shared with each? each friend so each friend would get that amount yes b i like it you are the next contestant on the price is right no, just kidding. okay so now we move to c c looks really weird it's a big square and but i also notice it's like one hole and look at this there's a little halfway line here okay so here's a half a loaf of bread and then again, one, two, three, four, five, six. It has been divided into six equal parts. There's your one. Yes. Bingo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a bingo right here. It's C. Uh, how about this one? D. Okay, what are these? Little, little trisket, little crackers? What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then they're each in half. Okay, this diagram's a little confused. We need a whole part. There's no whole... And it really just looks sound like this person's really confused. So sorry. D, you are not dynamic today. Sorry. Time to move on. I think that was 18. All right. Now we come to your teacher gives you the problem six divided by one fifth. Okay. Yes, I did. I just gave you that problem. Your teacher. That would be me. All right. It says draw a diagram to represent six divided by one fifth. Okay, I have to draw a diagram? Okay, let me go ahead and draw my diagram. I'll be back. And voila. I know, super speed. I went into my dark room and I started making these really cool figures. And look, this is what I have. It appears like I have a diagram to represent six, and six is my dividend. Therefore, I made six squares. Yeah. And then because I'm dividing my sizing, my, my, my sizing group is one fifth. So it was divided into five equal pieces for each one of those holes. Therefore, I end up with an answer of, what does it even say for us to give it an answer? It doesn't, does it? It just says draw a diagram to represent that. Okay. I won't give the answer then. Goodbye. All right. For B, part B, it says write a story problem to represent 6 divided one f by 1 fifth. All right. 6 divided by 1 fifth. Well, let me see here. What do I think of? All right. I saw some students doing some yarn the other day. I'll use the yarn. How about, let's say that Mia has 6 yards of yarn. Six yards of yarn. Sounds like a tongue twister there. She cuts the yarn into pieces that are one-fifth yard long. How about that? How many pieces of yarn does she have now? That could be a kind of an example. So let me see if I can't write that up really quick. And there you go. There is my story problem. Now, part C says use a related multiplication expression to solve your story problem. Show your work. Oh, cool. I could do that. So we had six yards. I'm going to put my six yards. We were dividing it by, that's right, one-fifth. And six yards divided by one-fifth is equal to six times five because there's five pieces in each yard a yard a yard and then that's going to equal 30 and of course that means 30 Ooh, this guy came back huh 
Okay. That uh, means 30 yards. And let me try my cursive writing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now seven friends pick seven quarts of blueberries. Three of the blue. Blah, 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 blah. Three of the friends will share four quarts of blueberries equally. <laughs> Let me come back over here. Woo. I keep underlining that word. And the other four friends will share three quarts of blueberries equally. Ooh, in which group does each friend get a greater amount of blueberries? Explain your reasoning. All right, I need to do some. Okay, so three of the friends will share three. I'm sorry, three of the friends will share four quarts of blueberries. All right, so if we have four quarts, we divide that by three friends. Each friend's going to get one and one third. Okay. And then it says the other four friends will share three quarts. Okay. Three quarts. I'm going to divide that by my four friends. Ooh. Yeah. That's all they get. So, in which group, in which group does each friend get a greater amount of blueberries? Explain your reasoning. Okay. The group with the three friends will get the most this one okay and my reasoning behind it well the group of three friends yeah will get a greater amount of blueberries and we figured out why because obviously you're starting off with a little bit more blueberries and less friends and here you're starting off with less blueberries only three quarts and you have more friends that we didn't really even have to figure that part of it out but we need to write our reasoning which I will do momentarily and there you go. The group of three friends start out with a greater amount of blueberries as compared to the group of four friends. Because the three friends, they start off with four quarts as opposed to three. Then the group of three friends have fewer people that they'll have to share with. So each friend is going to receive more blueberries. And just like that, I say cha-ching! Yes! Another completed math problem. Oh, I wish there were more, but you know, this is the end of the line, you guys. And I get really emotional at this point in the video. Very sad. Yes, it has come to an end. Yes, another math video. But I promise you, there are more to come. Now with that, live long and prosper.